Hello, welcome to another Made in China. And today we're going to be taking a look at this device, which is the... Um, don't know what it's called, actually. It doesn't have a name. Let's just call it the RM11880R, Made in China. Yeah, but it looks like it's one of the retro game uh, devices, but it isn't. It's just using a box, which is uh, very similar to their design of boxes. In fact, they probably just ripped off all that text down there as well. Yep. So you're probably thinking that this is just a Famicom clone. And to be honest, it is actually sold as a Famicom clone, but it is a little bit more than just that. Now take a look at what we get in the box. It's a typical array of stuff. Oh, there we go. We know what the video machine, uh, <laughs> we know what the console is called now. It's the video game console. All right. So you get your typical toilet paper instructions. And on that side, we have them in Chinese, a little registration card, a micro USB charging cable. You can also transfer ROMs onto this device using this cable. And we have a TV out. And today I'm going to take a look at the quality of the TV out because this device is really, 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 really cheap. So, um, yeah, let's see if it actually does put out a video signal. Talking of which, here is the device itself. And yes, you can see that it is very shiny and it is a massive fingerprint magnet. Yeah, all right. So on the back of the machine, we can see we've got the battery compartment. And in there, we have a thousand milliamp Newman battery that will give you about four hours of gameplay on this thing. On the side here, we have the volume dial and on the top we have the tv out which also also doubles up as the headphone socket uh we have the dc 5 volt in also can be used to transfer data onto this machine and we have the on and off switch this side absolutely nothing all right now as you can clearly see we don't have a d-pad on here we have one of these analog looking digital rockers and to be honest it's okay i mean I'd rather have a D-pad, but this thing isn't too bad and it does center itself back to the center. For how long, who knows, but as I said, this device is very, very cheap, so we can't expect premium build quality. The buttons themselves, they're okay, nothing special there. All right. Now, as I said before, you're probably thinking that this is just a Famicom clone and it certainly looks like one, but it has a little bit of a secret on it. So let's power it up and see what it can do. Hmm. Nothing's going on. <laughs> okay, well, I did just press the power button there, but nothing is working. And I did charge this bloody thing. All right. Let's jump cut and connect this to some power. Okay, so we're about to reposition ourselves and get this connected up to a power source because the battery is actually dead on it. I'm sure I charged this battery last night as well. Anyway. As you can see on the screen, we have a few different options. We've got NES, we've uncrossed, we've got FC, Famicom. But wait a minute, isn't NES and Famicom the same thing? And over here we've got Game Boy Advance, all right. Well, it turns out that it does have Game Boy Advance compatibility and it does have NES or NES or Nintendo Entertainment System compatibility. But what the hell is FC? Should be Famicom, right? Well, going into that section, we will find out that it's not. It is, in fact, Mega Drive. Yes, this thing does run Mega Drive games, surprisingly. So let's get a little bit closer to the machine and see how well the emulation is on this device. Okay, so here we are taking a look at Batman close up here on this device running Sega Mega Drive emulation. How good is it? Well, fingers crossed. One thing I must say is that it does have a 60 hertz refresh screen, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, the front panel is made of plastic and not glass. All right, usually that would be A, but it's not. Okay. All right, looks like it's got A, B, C. Yeah, all right, straight away you can see that it's not scrolling very smoothly and there is a lot of screen tearing. 
and the sound effects for the punches are not right. Speed is fine though. And the music seems okay. Okay, let's change the game and try another one. Yeah, a bit of a delay on the music starting there. Yeah, this game is not working at the correct speed. It is running a little bit slow. Gotta say, this is a beautiful game though, isn't it? Especially for its time. Okay, let's take a look at one more Mega Drive game. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Do you think that sound is correct? It's been a long time since I played this game, so I can't remember how you play it now. <laughs> yeah, anyway, there you go. That's a Mega Drive emulation for you. Not the greatest in the world. Alright, let's take a look at Game Boy Advance, see how it handles that stuff. Uh, there are, bloody hell, 550 Game Boy Advance games on this thing. Now, actually, I do know that's true because when I put this into the PC, they're all listed as standard ROMs. So you can just um, drag and drop whatever ROM you want onto this machine and you, it'll just show up in the menu. Okay, let's hope uh, Game Boy Advance emulates better than uh, Mega Drive did. Now is it me or was that running a little bit too fast at the very beginning? Turn it down a little bit. Yeah, it seems to be inconsistent with speed, doesn't it? Watch this. See, that's running kind of sluggish now. I tell you what, let's choose a different game. But um, I was noticing quite a bit of uh, speed inconsistencies there. Alright, fans of Pokemon games will be happy. You don't have to download those that are already on there. Yeah, you can hear some issues with the sound straight away. It is slightly um, distorted. It's as if it's got some sort of frame skip option on it and it's not um, performing very well. Now one thing you might be interested to know about this machine is by pressing select you can do save states and they do work on the Mega Drive section as well so let's just save that there. I think I pressed the right button, yeah it's doing something. Okay and what we'll do is we'll uh, reset that game I guess we got to choose the same game, obviously. So uh, let's uh, go back to Tekken Advance, load it up. All right, that's loaded. And let's press the select button, load the save. Yeah, there you go. So the save states do work, which is good. Yeah, that is running slow.
Okay, let's try one more Game Boy Advance game. Let's see how this works. I do love the intro on this. <laughs> Alright, let's get into it. Yeah, the music's skipping like crazy. Yeah, that's not working very well, is it? That is a shame. Okay, well, this device is sold as a Famicom. Uh, oops, <laughs> I thought that was a barrier. This device is so. Bloody hell. <laughs> as I was saying, this device is sold as a Famicom game player, not a Mega Drive and not a Game Boy Advance game player. They just happen to be bonus features. So let's take a look at the main type of games it's meant to play, Famicom games, or NES games in this case. By the way, there are a total of 2,051 games, so pretty much every game you could ever want is going to be on here. Alright, so let's start off with a bit of Toki. One player, please. Now, if I play Famicom stuff okay, then we're in with a winner for a nice, cheap Famicom clone. Well, it's not perfect. Straight away I can notice some sound issues, but, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's playable. Just change the game. Yeah, you can see the screen issues there. The refresh rate is not all it should be, which makes me wonder if this actually is a 60 hertz screen. It's meant to be. Okay, so yeah. Seems to have the same issue as um, all the other machines really, but it is running at the correct speed. Okay, let's take a look at the TV out, see how it copes with that. Okay, so when you plug in the TV cable into the top, it comes up with this message, ear mode or TV out. Ear mode basically means headphones and TV out means it should put the image onto the TV screen. So let's give that a try. TV out mode, please. Let's see if that's worked. Maybe not, as we can see here. Nothing is working. Yeah, it's just come back up on the actual machine itself, uh, TV out mode or ear mode. Let's give that another try. As you can see, it's kind of doing something on there. No, it's done it again. Um, yeah. Okay, let's try the cable one more time. In it goes. Okay, TV out mode. Maybe I've got to press start. No, select. Nope. Okay, only the A button does anything. No, okay. So it seems the TV out mode doesn't work on this device. It's possible that it is PAL only. And uh, my TV is NTSC um, when it comes to composite video signals. So yeah, that ain't gonna work. 
Okay, well, there we have it. That is this little portable device with no name whatsoever. Um, it's currently selling for about 27 US dollars. It plays NES games fairly reasonable, I guess. Uh, Mega Drive, Game Boy Advance, not so good. Anyway, the link in the video description down below if you're interested in picking one of these up. Um, yeah, well, until next time, keep on gaming, take it easy. Oh, and by the way, we've got a Super Famicom shooting special Retro Core Show coming very soon. I'm in the middle of editing that one, so keep an eye open for that. Until next time, take it easy, guys.